Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Following my series of videos on getting precise hair cutouts with Affinity Photo, not to leave Pixelmator Pro users behind, this time I'm going to be showing you what I think is the best way to get a perfect hair cutout with Pixelmator Pro. This is something I learned about only recently after a lot of tinkering, but based on what I'm seeing, I believe the method I'm going to be showing you is the best way. So let's get right into it. To demonstrate the process, I'll use this image. Before I show you my preferred method, let's try to solve the problem with a tool most people would probably use for this task, and that is select subject. Isn't this supposed to be an easy problem for select subject? Let's see. I'll press Q on the keyboard to bring up the quick selection panel. I'll click select subject. Next, I'll add a mask. I'll right click on the layer, click Add Mask. As you can see, the result is pretty poor. A lot of background remnants remain, and from the looks of it, it's not that easy to get rid of. So as you can see, it's not as simple as using Select Subject to get a great hair cutout. So now that we have an idea of the challenge of getting quality hair cutouts, Let's now use my preferred method, which hopefully will give better results. Instead of using Select Subject, I'll use another AI tool, the Remove Background tool. Right-click on the layer, click Remove Background. As you can see, it is a much better result. There is much less background remnants than before, which seems to indicate a superior algorithm than Select Subject. However, while the improvement is certainly welcome, it is not perfect. Although much less, some remnants still remain. How do we get rid of it? That brings us to my second recommended AI tool, the Remove Color tool. Click Format, Color Adjustments, click Remove Color. This adds in the Remove Color panel. As Remove Color is a destructive adjustment and doesn't support masks, I'll duplicate the current layer just in case I want to make any corrections later. I'll also hide the layer. Next, I'll use the eyedropper to select the color. I'll move the color range slider to control how much color is removed. There! The cutout is looking much better. The hair remnants have largely been removed. Unfortunately though, there is a side effect, as similar colors present in the face have been unintentionally affected. Now how do we deal with that? Simple, we bring back the lost pixels from the main image by augmenting it with the pixels from the duplicate layer. I'll unhide the duplicate layer. As you can see, the removed colors were brought back. And that is because the bottom layer is showing through the transparency. We don't want to recover all the removed colors, only those in her face. Let's fix that. With the bottom layer selected, I'll add a mask. Next, I'll invert the mask. As the mask is totally black, the bottom layer is now effectively hidden. Let's selectively bring back the removed colors by painting white on the target areas. There, a much better result. I'll clean up the interface by grouping the layers. Let's have a better look on the quality of the cutout by adding in a background image. Unfortunately, as I view the cutout over the background, I'm noticing some problems that need to be fixed. No problem, since we used a mask, it is a simple matter to go back and correct any mistakes. Let's paint white over the missed areas. And there you go, 
an extremely high quality result. Don't you think so? And it was so easy if you know which AI tools work best for hair cutouts. And now you do. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if there's an even better workflow than this for getting perfect hair cutouts. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.